securely on the system. So if you're on a top rope setup, there are no other uh, bolts between you and the, and the ground. So if I take this out of the anchor, I'm now no longer attached to the rope system. Does that make sense? So what yep. I want to do is I want to actually make sure that that's attached to something. And even though my belay is, uh, you know, has given me slack, I'm still on belay. So they're still sort of paying attention, even though things are soft. So I want to make sure that if I do fall, that the system can still protect me. So I'm going to take one of my, my tools and Put my rope through that. Okay, so I'm still on belay and I'm hooked into this bolt and my belayer is still on down there. Does that make sense? Just please feel free to interrupt at any point if you want some more information. So I'm going to now take my anchor off. Yeah. So I could just use this anchor and then yeah. oh, also if you're following along you want me to slow down just let me know and I'll do it. I still have to say I found it a little bit good. So I used the uh, All right, so I've managed to tack down my anchor. I'm ready to do the next step. Now what I want to you'll see a lot of people do at this point is they put themselves on uh, two points like this and then they fully untie themselves from the rope but of course that comes with a couple of risks so I am redundant on these two bolts however if I can't come off from this then potentially I'm going to be off the rope so there's no way the rope system or the belayer can protect me and also I have the risk of then potentially dropping the rope so one way people get around that is they, you know, tie a loop and hook it onto their gear loop so that they don't drop it. But all of these things for me seem like uh, less than ideal when there's a better way. And the better way is actually to pull up a little bit of rope. So I'm now going to tie a figure of eight into that. I'm going to grab one of my locking carabiners. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm just going to hook that onto my belay. Make sense? So now I'm effectively attached to the rope in two places. Maybe you'd like to show a close up of that so people can see it. Can you see all the rope, the loop as well? Yeah, it looks good. Yep. All right. So you can see my belayer is still on. My rope system is still attached to something. I'm hooked into this bolt. So I'll take this one off because I probably wouldn't have this one on here. I'm still attached to two points. Uh, and what I can do now is I'll free myself. You can see I've pulled myself off, but I'm still fully attached onto the, the rope. And it would still save me if I had a fall from this one. So now I can take this tail off here, and I can thread it through the rope. Okay, so that was the first step. And what I can do now is I can actually just tie another finger of eight. A very low they have now they have then they never have 
I'm going to use my other looking camera thing. Here. That on. And now I can take the other one off. And you'll see I'm on the road. I've never come off the road. I can undo this. Now I'm going to get my belayer to continue from this point. So I'll back down that last piece. And I'll get you to come back on below. Okay. I'll swap cameras. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do here is when I'm ready, I'm going to pull myself up a bit uh, so I can get my weight off my thighs. I'll say, okay. 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 And then I'll sit back on that. And then. Okay, ready to lower. Okay, lowering. So, James, when I'm at this point, I often find it really hard to get that um, paz off the uh, anchor because my weight's pushing down on top of it. Yeah, that's an excellent point. So, I'll um. Pulling up flare. Yep. And what I might do, thank you. I might just put the anchor on again, and I'll show you how to defend against that. So in this case, I'd actually already tested this anchor for you guys. What angle it's going to work at, but uh, I'm surprised. I really like the uh, double figure eight method because it kind of it's idiot proof because I've always just like held on to the end of the rope and just not let go, but it's just not the way to do it really. I've always, I've always, when I do it, I do the um, pull up a bit of rope, tie it and clipping it into a quick draw on my waist. But it seems this method definitely seems more better because you're actually using that rope to be an extra point of safety rather than it just being yeah, hanging exactly. off your harness. If you tie it yeah. to just your gear loop or whatever, then it doesn't provide any protection. Um, and once you, um, if you did fall or whatever, or if you even had a little fall, like a little shock load onto your pads or something, you can potentially just rip it straight off and you'll lose the, um, the rope. Uh, and if you've got it there and you're going to tie it on anyway, you might as well have it as a piece of redundancy. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's a good idea. Yeah, it's definitely best practice. It's interesting because none of the like, Ways I've seen it taught before, like online or like from being taught from other people, seem to have done that. I've never seen that before. It's interesting. Yeah, a is it? Things. It's a less widely used method. I guess. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of things are like, like it, all the techniques are a sort of a, an evolution, you know. And it just depends when they wrote this thing. And you know, other methods have been um, the sort of leading ones for a long time, and then they get replaced with something a little bit better. But it takes a while to filter through. Um, this is like the old unscrew your carabiner half a twist kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, all that sort of stuff. I actually had a 1980s carabiner and I went and grabbed it and I was like, hmm, he's actually right. Richard Delaney's pretty good, man. Yeah. You fully weight one and it gets locked and it's so hard to get undone. All right. So, um, Yes, I'll get you to put me on the lay again. Okay. And we'll just go get you back up there. So this is to answer your question, uh, Matt, about getting the carabiner off. And uh, the best thing to do is okay, to not have the problem in the first place. So I'll show you how to avoid that. But then if you do have it, because you haven't been able to avoid it, how to get yourself out of it. Um, all right, so I'm just going to come back up. On belay. All right. 
All right, so I've got to the anchor now. Just click on the easiest thing I can straight away because maybe it's precarious, maybe it's hanging, whatever. But what I'm actually going to do is, okay, um, Slack. All right, so I'm still on belay, but uh, I'm now at the anchor. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to think about the order in which things are going to be packed down on the anchor. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> you got to keep it clean. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the way to you've got to clean it. <laughs> um, Okay, so you've got to think about that's all right, that's all right. That was a good one. Um, so you've got to think about the order in which you've got to pack your gear down. And so you want to try and have the stuff that you're going to take off uh, sooner on top or at the front and the stuff that you're going to uh, pack down last behind. So, for example, I know I'm going to take this anchor down uh, as probably the very first thing. So when I come up here, and I've just clipped in here because, you know, I was half dying or whatever, now I'm going to just sort myself out and I'm going to do it with this quick draw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip the quick draw behind the carabiner. So that way when it's loaded, it's not pinching this carabiner flat onto the wall. So I'll just you can come around here. Yeah, you yeah, can walk in front. No it's cool, yeah, it's probably better yeah, than yeah. Yeah. Okay. trap whatever you feel. Yeah, that's, 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 no, we're it's good. Cool. Just, think. All right, so now I've waited that one and I'm going to reposition my other side of my pads. So I'm loaded on this one. Put that one on there. All right, so I'm loaded underneath. I'll take this one off because I'm not going to do that. All right, now you'll see that this is really easy to get off. And the That's a really nice solution. So that applies for the next step as well. When you thread the rope, if you thread the rope behind, you'll find that then when you load the rope, it doesn't pinch the paths against the rock and you'll be able to get it out easily. So uh, you just think about the order that you're gonna load stuff and yeah, just the stuff that's gonna come off last, load it behind. All right. So being so, able to like lift yourself up with that like steep angle so you have the space behind. That's right. That's so, a really good move. Yeah, so I went like that and then everything shifts up and now they're all loose. But you can't always do that. And you don't always know what the anchor's gonna be like. You know, if you're hanging really low on an anchor, it's gonna really pinch stuff in and you're not gonna be able to get it off very easily. Okay. Makes sense? Yep, makes sense to me. All right, so any questions? If you get yourself into trouble, uh, something you can do is you can, and it's really bound in there and you're having trouble unloading things, what you can do is you can grab yourself a sling off your hands. You can just girt hitch that. Now, whoop. all right, and then you can do things like either just use that as a handle or if you wanted to, you could step up on it so that it takes the full weight off all the gear and then picks it up. So a little bit of aid climbing there just to solve the problem of getting the weight up off the, off the bolt. Just make sure you're very stable so that you don't fall on your pads. That's right, you don't want to fall on your pads. In fact, I kept my pads tight, I don't know if you noticed that. I stayed out, which it didn't stay as hard as I wanted to. Or you just borrow Evan's pads because it's dynamic. <laughs> Evan, can I borrow your pass? <laughs> hand it through. Hand it through the camera. Yeah, just bring a printer out, scan it, and then he'll print out a copy. Anyway, you shouldn't like anything you do in that sort of regard to try and rescue the problem. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, it's always a get out of jail once you put yourself into a bit of a bind. The best thing is to not be in that situation in the first place, and just think about what order you need to load gear onto the onto the bolts makes sense cool any more questions on that one um i got a question about so i've seen a way of doing it where you ended up tying yourself back in twice that's right with the yeah. figure eight as opposed to just going straight through the anchors on the first go with the loop 
yep. um, and tying that in. Is there yes. a reason? A very, okay, that's a very common one. Can you give me a bit more slack? Yes. That's actually the main way they teach it when they teach it to be safe. The big problem with that one is, um, and why I don't like it, is because it works in perfect circumstances, but not all circumstances. So let's take this one here, for example. I've got my PAS in here. In fact, I might get you to do a close up. You can yes. Take me off the way. Okay. Yep. Do you want me to just remove this or just lose uh, this? No, okay. that's fine. Just feed a bit more through. So it moves. Yep. yep. Okay. All right. So does everyone fully understand that technique? Uh, does anyone want me to explain it or just go to the reasoning? Reasoning is okay. Reasoning's okay? All right. So you have to basically, for that technique, put a bite of rope through the bolt. Now, on this side, I can probably get one through, right? So, I, so if we look at what's going on here, I've taken up a bit of slack and I can push a bite of rope through. But how am I going to do that on this side? It's just not possible. So what do I do? Do I reposition my paths to here? Do I... Know, do I take the anchor down first using some other sort of situation? You can do that, but then what happens when you come to a crag where the bolts are actually even smaller than this? So it's just you'll find that probably quite a large percentage of scenarios you can't actually get a bite of rope through. So I can do it on that side in this. And I can contrive a way probably to do this side, but it's going to be difficult. If you get a close-up of these bolts, you'll see this one actually has more space. And this one here actually has less space. And I've also clipped in extra stuff to it. So it just won't fit there. And this one, I can just get it through. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. there are, I could probably make this one work if I really put my head to it. And I could probably... Uh, Put a, a thing in there. I could probably fit myself into the anchor. Um, then I could take the anchor down, get stuff out of here. Maybe then I, you know, I still, I don't know. I just don't know if I'd get a second one through. Let's actually mm. let's give it a go. Let's see if we can make it work. I'm just going to switch to the other side. Yeah. Can we come around? Up to you. Okay. Okay, so let's say my paths wasn't in there. Yeah, see, I still, I actually can't get that through. I actually still can't force that through. Okay, so if I take one side of the anchor down. Then, then you're only on one point of safety. Yeah, I am, exactly. Now, I'm... I, so I, this is exactly what I was about to say. I so totally wouldn't be doing this. I mean, unless if I had this one on a, um, so if I was still on belay on this one, I would be okay with it. But it just, um, just seems like a lot of work for very little gain. And then there are definitely going to be scenarios where you actually are not going to be able to make that work. So from my for my feeling, this one, which works everywhere, is just tie the knot, clip in, unclip that one, thread it through, and it works everywhere. All right, I might get you to switch around to the other side. See, is that true again? All right. Am I um, putting you on delay now? Yeah, you're putting me on delay. I might just pop down and we'll work out what we're going to do next. Mm -hmm. Yep, take. Yep. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, any other questions on that one or relating to that? Did that answer that one fully? And are you convinced? Yes. Um, I guess the only other, I mean, mainly I'd be sports climbing up. So yeah. I wouldn't have the anchor there, I suppose. Um, but it does, it does answer it because it can be a bit tricky to kind of squish it through the tiny loops. 
Yeah, so I'll do a scenario for you. Sorry. Okay. Here in preparation for this is one I prepared earlier. This is my ten volt. If you're wondering what that was. Is that rated, James? <laughs> uh, it's rated to something. <laughs> I'd rate it to about 100 grams. <laughs> Great, you can take my weight. Yeah, Ronnie looks confident. Yeah. Bomber, right. I believe, is the term. <laughs> not Ronnie, Ronnie's not here. Yeah, he's socially distant. All right, so we'll do this uh, lead climbing scenario. All right, so I'll get you to put me on. Okay. I'm below. Okay, give me some slack. Yeah. All right, so I'm climbing, climbing. Uh, now I clip this super rated bolt here. Climbing, climbing. Now I get up to the anchor. Now the normal thing you're going to do if you're climbing is that, and then going to lower off but instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here I'm going to just clip one of these okay and then depending on what's going on you know if I could stand like this then I would just leave it at that um, so I'm still on belay I've got this bolt and all the bolts below me so I'm well protected uh, so I wouldn't actually worry uh, about doing much else what I would do is I would tend to just at that point take up a bit of slack. In this case, would you not have would you not have the your pads clipped on? Because when you're pulling that slack up, potentially if you accidentally unclip something or something like you slip off that ledge, you're still going to take a pretty big whip around the edge, right? Well, I'd only fall to this one. I mean, it depends. Look, you have to um, sort of apply some situational awareness to it. So it depends. So if I come up and there's a ledge, um, then like I'm standing on this rock here, then I um, wouldn't necessarily clip my pads in. But if it was a hanging belay like I was just doing before, then I have to just to, so that I can work on it. I mean, I'll do it as a hanging belay if you want. If you want to see the full complicated process. So no, it's okay. Sure. I was okay. just wondering, just because yeah. just because you're holding a fair bit of rope in your hand, right? That would be still a you'd fall down on. Off yeah, that. it is. It is a reasonable amount, but at the same time, like I guess it's not that much. It's not that much. Like you know, it's um, and the bolts above me. It's going to be a pretty soft fall. Like if if there's a ledge within that distance below me, well, two things. One is maybe I would be thinking twice about doing that, or maybe it's even less risky because maybe it's like a little step type thing and it's all pretty close. So it just depends on the circumstances. Uh, but remember, you've potentially got a series of bolts all the way down. And if this was the next bolt, there's always the potential that you would miss this clip and fall from here. You know, that's normal sort of climbing. So, you know, can you pull that through? Yes. Thank you. So in this case, you know, if I'm climbing, you know, potentially I'm going to fall that sort of length. So if yeah. I then flip that one uh, and pull some slack through, and look, you know, if you're feeling particularly sketchy, maybe don't pull as much through, you know, just work with the minimum amount you need. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Yep, thank you. So I'm going to clip that. Clip that. 
come to my loop. I'm going to untie this one. All right, you can see, even though I tied it this time shorter because of the conversation we just had, I've still got quite a bit here. So I've got quite a bit to work with. So I'm going to thread this through and I'm going to thread it behind based on our previous discussion. In fact, I should have gone completely under that one. I'm actually a bit far away from these bolts, so I should, probably should be in a hanging delay. Just on the knot too, I have been doing a figure of eight. You can actually do an overhand on a bike, it's fine. Uh, you'll just find it's quite hard to get undone once you've loaded it and you get to the bottom. Now I'm actually gonna have to pull up a bit here. So you want me to, yeah. um, is this one gonna rip off? Uh, just stand back that way a bit and then it won't. Yep. So I'm going up. Okay. And take. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Almost. <laughs> oh, a bit sketchy that, that bolt. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Sorry, it's kind of hard right. to do it all. <laughs> okay. Just let me know when you're ready and I'll. Yeah, I can, I'm ready. <laughs> let me just change camera tickets. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Nice nostril view. <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes shit gets real. <laughs> I've never felt so close to you, James. <laughs> what about last night? <laughs> That's not social distancing. <laughs> So you'll notice I take this other carabiner and I'm going to basically put it through here. So I've got two. I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. And they're opposite and opposing. Okay, so the other thing I'll do now too, is I'll have a bit of a look at the root. And if uh, the root is straight, I probably won't do anything else. But if uh, it wanders a bit all over the place, what I might do is grab this one, and rather than taking it off, I'll leave it attached to that root and just clip it into my belay loop. And this will actually keep me close to this root, this one, as I, as I come down. So I'm gonna come back on the rope, if you could take. Okay, come right. on, safety. All right, on belay. On you. Okay, now if you slowly lower me down. All right, lowering. You'll see, I tend to follow that rope line. And this can be good as you've got a clean carabiners, so quick draws rather on the way down, it'll keep you close to them. And you tend to want to take this one off before you take the last uh, quick draw off the wall, because uh, typically that one will be tightly loaded. And at that point, you just want to be lowered off anyway. Uh, all right, so that's the um, the lead climbing version of that. Any questions on that have come up from from seeing that? No, no questions. No, all right. I don't think so. Sorry. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, cool. So I'll just talk about one other thing too. So if we look in close here, 
I put these carabiners in opposite and opposing. Um, well, Any time that you're in a situation where uh, a, a, an open gate would be potentially fatal, then you use a locking carabiner. In addition, if it's going to be loaded and unloaded, which is often the case with lowering because you might be cleaning gear off the wall, you want to do opposite and opposing as well. Now, if you have an auto locker, for example, like I have on my, I've got like a magnetron here, and uh, here's another one, a um, one of these sort of auto lockers. Twist lock. Twist lock. Yep. See these ones. That's the single one. Uh, you could just use one of those because they have redundancy against uh, being worked open. Um, whereas if you're just using standard screw gates in this scenario, it's a good idea to use two. And you should have two anyway, because you've used them uh, to do this procedure. Um, when I actually do this for real and not demonstrating it, I actually don't use these. I use my auto locker because I always have it on the back of my harness. And then I just, I have to have one extra and I have my auto locker. So I use my standard screw date to do the first knot, which I attach to. Then I thread it through, tie a second knot, attach it with my auto locker, tack that down, and then lower. Cool. All right. Uh, any questions on this? This is the lowering method, and I'll do a repel next. Uh, but I want to make sure we've flushed out any questions on this before we get to that. So, uh, you're a little soft there, but I think I understand the principle of this. I think it's a pretty simple and effective way to do it. Yeah. So I was just saying that uh, this is the lowering off method, um, and I'm going to do the how to repel off next. Um, but I just want to cover any questions or flush out anything else that people want to talk about before I move on to the other method. So, um, yeah, is there anyone have any other questions? No. Nope. All right. Okay, cool. Well, I'll just pack this down and I'll ask a, another question. Is that other camera still working okay? We're on this one at the moment. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Or we, we can, here's where it's okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the, um, does anyone have any ideas about why you might repel as opposed to be lowered off or vice versa? If it's a slabby climbing, you don't want to drag your rope all the way across the, the edge of some kind, whatever, like across the rock, basically. Yeah, if there's a sharp edge, that's definitely a good reason. Any others? My understanding is that it's less damaging for the bolts. It might not be a huge issue for, you know, small climbs that no one goes to, but if you're at Yosemite with hundreds of climbers going through regularly, it's, you probably want to do as little wear through the bolt as possible. Yep, that's another excellent reason as well. So that's the sort of um, etiquette sort of uh, reason um, and in fact these sort of bolts that we have here are examples of ones that if you were on a high traffic route on a big crag that you would actually want to repel off because these are fixed in place and if they wear out they're, they're quite challenging to replace quite difficult if you do a quick search online for say climbing chain anchor uh, you'll see that some anchors have a chain and then often a, a repel loop on them uh, or some anchors have like another sort of mallion attached there which is replaceable there's actually some of those at bangor down the other end i think oh, are they down the other down the other end oh, okay right so in that case then they're specifically put there so that you can uh, just be lowered off and if they wear out they're very easy to replace so more and more you'll see those around the place and the kind of if you're thinking about the etiquette rule if it's a fixed section like that fixed bolt not replaceable then you should um, have sail off it uh, otherwise be lowered off having said that all around the smaller crag uh, you will see people just lowering off at the end of the climb at the end of the day that's quite common uh, in australia not particularly um, Sort of adhere to that rule, but if you go to Europe, some other places, um, you get some nasty looks uh, if you are uh, you know, being lowered off on fixed bolts because they're quite expensive to replace. 
So that's uh, definitely a good reason. There's one more reason. Anyone know what that is? It's quicker. Sorry? Is it because abseiling is way more fun and makes you look cooler? <laughs> you got that way too easily. Also, also yeah. your belayer can go and do something else. Like, Well, actually, can they? So you could, if you had a prussic with you, you could abseil off with a prussic. But otherwise, they need to give you a fireman's belay. So they should hang around and, and look after you. They can have a little break while you set up. They generally, uh, you'll need them to give you a fireman. Um, so the fun factor there is an extra reason. There's one more reason. I mean, one, anyone know what that is? No takers. Anyone in the... Is it better for the rope as well? Uh, why you would uh, repel over lower off. Uh, and they've already got... Okay. Main kind of bolt they've already got. Is it better for the rope? Say Is again? it better for the rope? Uh, so the rope was the first one. So sharp edge, abrasion. Oh, okay. So like already. Mm -hmm. the rope. Yes, that's correct. Okay. But it's the same sort of answer. Mm -hmm. um, same answer as the... First one, the only two, abrasion, etiquette. We've had that. Yeah. Don't worry, the live audience is doing the same as the home audience now. So. <laughs> you might be onto something there. What? Is it faster? Faster. How many syllables? <laughs> No, not sharp edges, but that's interesting actually. If you, were, I hadn't thought about that, might be an answer actually, but not the one I was thinking of. Was uh, it was faster. 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 Okay. So faster. Um, I would say that actually being lowered off is probably faster. You can get pretty okay. quick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, it's not the reason. I mean, if the, the real reason is. The <laughs> You've already chucked a rock on the head of your belayer. Uh, yeah, no, no. Look, these are all good reasons. Not to diminish those reasons. Okay, so the, the, the other reason is that um, uh, repelling actually puts far less force on the anchor. When you're lowered off, it puts double the weight of the heaviest person in the system. So if you've got a heavy belayer, the, the, the weight on the bolt is double. So if you've got some particularly sketchy looking bolts, they're like rusted or they're feeling a bit loose, like they might come out of the wall, but you've still got to get some off the wall. Repelling off will put far less stress on them and it's far less likely to cause bolt failure. So look, you're going to be uh, pretty nervous in that situation if you're thinking about it. But uh, yeah, it basically more than half the load basically on the bolt. Um, I just will say something about Ronnie's uh, suggestion that if the bolt uh, was damaged and had sharp edges on it. So there's two things there. If you lower off, potentially you've got the rope going over a sharp edge, which would be bad. If you're repelling, you've potentially got it sitting and rubbing in the same spot on a sharp edge. So you'd have to assess where that sharp edge is and think about what choice you're going to make. But that is a good Thing to think about. To yeah, you might have to sacrifice a beam and leave it there. So, uh, one thing to remember is that when you're being lowered off, the rope is moving through the system as you're lowered, whereas when you repel, it's static. So, you know, potentially, you've got to evaluate the circumstances to see what's good and bad about that in the circumstances. Uh, any questions on, on that? Any bit of insight before we demonstrate the repel? No, but I think that's, that's a really good idea. Just like being aware of where all the forces are going while you're abseiling and while you're belaying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that actually top roping puts the most force on the bolts of all the different types of uh, climbing. Okay, um, what I'll do is we'll uh, demonstrate the repel. Now, the other problem with repelling is it's not possible to do what I just demonstrated before and get up there and stay on the rope the entire time. You actually have to come off the rope. 
So you have to make yourself uh, oh, fully redundant uh, in order to switch. Um, so you don't get that extra level of protection, uh, you know, the redundancy that protects you against human error. So we might do this in a um, time scenario. Just switch to so okay, we'll just go back to yeah. the other camera. <laughs> Is that what it's showing? Yes. Oh, okay. It's good you can see that as well. Yeah, it took me a moment to work that out. <laughs> cool. All right, do you want me to yeah. pass? Cool. All right, I'm climbing, climbing. I'm below. Okay, take. Take. Okay. Come up here. In fact, I actually wouldn't be in this scenario. Just you know, take one of these out. Because I actually wouldn't have clicked the other one. I would have got up here. I would have clicked one of them. And then I would click like that. All right. Take. And slack. Okay. Slack. Given. All right. So I will have already communicated with my belayer so that they know that I'm actually going to repel, that I'm not going to uh, lower off. But that's not always possible. You might get up here and because of the scenario or whatever, you've changed your mind. So you've got to remember to let your belayer know if they don't know already. So to actually take this one now, over here. So I'm on two points of redundancy. So you can see here, I'm protected. Now I will actually have some bolts between me, but it's of no effect. I essentially need to thread this through uh, in a way that I can repel on. Can so, me off belay? So yeah, you can take me off belay. I'm secure. So I'll say I'm secure. That way they can take me off belay. Uh, I mean, what is it really a quick look but uh the local button the uh quick uh uh Okay. Once again, just be oh, very careful three. not to drop the rope. Okay, I'm going to thread this good. through Fine. behind. Uh, uh, I thought you were uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. And the first thing I'm gonna do usually I just put my foot on the rope to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere. And I'll tie a barrel knot. Into the end of the rope. So I'm protected on that end. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull. I have a quick Sorry? question. Is a, is a overhand not adequate or should you always tie a barrel? Uh, uh, but, an overhand knot can actually come off. Did you hear that? No. Okay, so Ronnie was yelling out there. Yeah, so an overhand knot can come out and it's quite a small knot as well. So it'll tend to be pushed around a bit when it hits the carabiner, they throw the um, belay device at any sort of velocity. So you're better off tying something bigger, like a figure of eight or a double overhand or a barrel knot. The barrel knot's the best one. And I, it's basically like three overhand knots stacked together. Make sense? All right, yep. so we're going to pull the rope through. Now, what I would normally do is I'd pull through half of the rope uh, and I would make sure that I've got two even lengths. I'm not going to do that because it's a 70 meter rope and I'm only a meter off the ground. So, uh, what I'm going to do is. Get my belay device, my descender in this case. 
You see, he's still there. Yeah, the sun keeps moving. Oh, uh, yeah. You can take that one back. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, I want to load this system so I can load test it first. I'm going to pull myself up and now I've got my weight fully on my abseiling gear. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm ready to go. So I'm going to let my belayer now know. All right, I'm back on the road, ready to abseil. I'm going to hear from them that I'm on belay. On belay. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm going to come off safety. Looks like I'm actually going to have to pull up just a little more. Okay. Now I can quite easily get that off because it's sitting at the right place. Abseiling. On belay. Oh, cool. now I'm back on the ground. So you can see the process is uh, a little bit different from the one I showed before because you have to basically get yourself onto two points of safety and there is less uh, room to make mistakes because you have to come completely off the road. All right. Any queries on that one? I think you covered that one really well. Sorry. I covered it well. Covered it well. All right. Well, I don't think there's anything else. Can I just make a comment? Sorry. Can I just yes. make a comment? I mean, yeah. maybe I, I uh, like lots of redundancy, but um, in the rappel method, I, I tend to, before I untie myself on the end of the rope, I do tend to pull up a meter and put a bite in and secure it to, to my belt, you know, on the blade loop or whatever, so that when I do untie myself, I don't have any risk of dropping the rope. Yeah. And, a, and then yeah. I pull up. That's what I tend to do anyway. Yeah, yeah, I think that's quite common. I think that's a definitely if, um, if you're holding the full weight of the rope as well, um, it can actually be quite heavy. So uh, yeah. I would definitely say do that. Um, just the main reason I didn't demonstrate that in that case is when I showed you the first version and I tied it into my belay loop, um, mm -hmm. is to make sure that you realize that tying it into your gear loop is not going to do anything to protect you in a fall. It's purely to stop you from dropping the rope. Yeah. But it's just, uh, if, if you look on a trail on, um, there's, a, there's a trail on rocky uh, climbing, what's it called, rock climbing in the Blue Mountains. Um, Mike Law has uh, done a little bit on cleaning. And he, he shows uh, you uh, uh, when you take the bite up to stop the rope from dropping, putting it through your belay loop. Because for the very reason that you just demonstrated, you can actually use it like a pulley then to pull yourself up to take the rope off, to weight off the, um, off your uh, uh, anchor. So it's, it's really a, a demo that's worth watching. Uh, Mike Law's posted it on. Uh, oh, maybe uh, you can post that, uh, that URL in the I'll chat. Find that, yeah, I'll post it. Yeah, it's really quite interesting. I think it's a bit, he shows it makes it a bit too complicated. I'm in favour of what you did, uh, James, because it's simple. Yeah, it's easy to remember, simple. But I think the principle of uh, do you see the did you see the first uh, method? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. Now I, I like what you've done. It's very simple, and that's you know, kiss is really what's so, so important. It works in every scenario. I know a lot of people teach the one where you push the bite through the bolts, but it doesn't work in a lot of places. So it's um, yeah, much the, the club ropes tend to be ten point two or ten and a half millimeter ropes, whereas your own rope might be might be a bit slimmer. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you're never going to get one of our big fat root ropes through some of these bolts. So, uh, yep. Yeah, use a yeah, good old 11 millimeter rope. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. Anyone else got anything else they want to add? Questions or another point they just want to add, like Gordon did? Uh, anything? I can't see anyone's faces, so I've got no idea if you're nodding. Or... <laughs> I'm definitely nodding. It's good. It's definitely nodding. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, uh, feel free if you um, have any questions that come up after this, uh, something that's not clear or you want a clarification on, um, and uh, you can shoot me an email, whatever. You've all got my email address. And uh, otherwise, happy climbing, happy cleaning, and uh, hopefully we'll all be out on the rock again soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, James. That was really Thank good. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Thank you, Jessica.
It's yep. great. Thank you. Uh, and thank you. Yes, definitely thanks to Jess, who was my uh, my camera person no here. And thank you very <laughs> yeah. much to Matt for uh, doing thanks, the guys. doing the camera switching and the intro and uh, looking after all the admin of the chat of the um, Zoom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Very good session. Thanks, Jane. <laughs> I'm going to finish the recording and I'll hopefully edit this and we can put this up online and have a bit awesome. of a summary of everything as well. Great. Awesome. Thanks. Cool.